Welcome to my video that describes the history of the Calgary International Airport. In addition to my own stories and experiences over a half century, I have searched the internet for additional information to incorporate into this video. However, I discover there is very little of Calgary Airport history online and less than half a dozen photos. With access to these few photos from the post-World War II era and my own collection of historical airport photos, I have made this video so it is available for others interested in the aviation history of the Calgary Airport. Thanks and I hope you enjoy this video. While the airport was going through the addition of a new runway, 1028, and the continued lengthening of runway 1634, all during the 1960s, the southwest and the southeast side was expanding with additional hangars and other development. This photo was possibly taken in the 1940s during the World War II era. I have indicated the runway heading numbers of the four runways and just follow the arrows and I've indicated uh, what each location is on this particular photo. My first time in Calgary was in 1956 on my solo cross country for my CPL. This is what the airport looked like at that time. These first five hangars were to support the Royal Canadian Air Force, RCEF military. And post World War II, these hangars became civilian use, other than number four. Number four remained Royal Canadian Air Force Reserve. And the next hangar built was hangar number six, indicated with the arrow. It became Calgary's first terminal building. This photo was taken in the 1950s. One major change was the number five hangar, located in center photo, burned to the ground. It was replaced with two hangars. The first was the Calgary Flying Club. The other was Ben Franklin's aircraft engine overhaul. This was Calgary's first terminal building. And this was Calgary's first ATC control tower. It was located on the northeast corner of the hangar number one. After landing, the controller instructed me to park below the tower for refueling and come up to the tower to refile my flight plan. After climbing three flights of stairs, I arrived in the tower. My initial view of the interior was two controllers on duty. It was in the era of many light aircraft with no radios, abbreviated Nordo. These aircraft were controlled with a light gun. With the radio microphone in the other hand, the controller was prepared to give instructions to those aircraft that had radios. I spent hours fascinated with the view from the tower. There has been many changes over the decades. Hangar number two and three both burned to the ground. Hangar number three was replaced with Shell Oil's hangar. Hangar number two pad uh, still remains empty. Hangar number one with the control tower number one burned to the ground in the 1980s. This was Calgary's first terminal building. This tower was never used as an air traffic control tower as it did not have a full 360 degree unobstructed view. With the advent of larger, faster, and more aircraft being flown, and the increase in passenger traffic, this terminal building became inadequate. The small ramp area became congested, and plans were to build a larger terminal building on the southwest side of the airport. As this was a major development that would take time, an interim terminal building was required. A dilapidated structure on the southwest side was available and put to use during the construction of the new terminal building, which is in view at the top of this photo. 
Now with the building completed, the terminal building was put into service in 1956. This is the view of the main entrance. Now that the building has been completed, the terminal building number two was put into service in 1956. At that time, the temporary terminal building located in this area was removed. The main entrance to the Calgary International Airport at that time was off of 48th Avenue, McKnight Boulevard in this area, top right. The control tower was put into service about 5657, and it's located on the top of the terminal building. I was transferred to Calgary Tower number two in March 1959. I have indicated with arrows the various offices within. On my first day of work at the tower, this was the view I had of the interior. In that era, this was modern equipment. The first view I had out of the tower window overlooking the airport was the layout you now see. At the time, all runways were serviceable. Due to irregularities, runway 0 to 20 was put out of service a year later, indicated with X's on each end of the runway. This radar was known as the AASR-1, which stands for Airport and Area Surveillance Radar, and it was in service about 1960-61 at Calgary. This radar antenna was located slightly north of the runway layout in this area. The year I arrived to Calgary Tower, runway 1634 was under construction. It was being extended to the north. The following year, it was in service with access to taxiway uniform in this area. The runway remained in service with a displaced threshold at the approach to 16. Months later, plans were made to further extend runway 1634. Aircraft were getting bigger, faster, and we were entering the airline jet age. Completion of 1634 extension was terminated with access a taxi kilo at the north end. Air traffic was increasing. Another east-west runway was required. Unable to extend runway 725, a new runway 1028 was planned. Construction started immediately, and it was in this area. To accommodate even larger aircraft, runway 1634 was again extended to its present length. Runway 1634 has gone through uh, three extensions. Its original length was at arrow number one, and it was extended, first extension was to taxiway uniform, arrow number two. The next extension uh, was to Taxi Kilo. And the final extension was to the length it is today. While the airport was going through the addition of a new runway, 1028, and the continued lengthening of runway 1634, all during the 1960s, the Southwest and the southeast side was expanding with additional hangars and other development. This wasn't the only construction going on in the 1960s on the Calgary Airport. There was a new ATC control tower, number three, being built on the west side midfield of the airport. In addition, we had the new terminal building number three to the northeast under construction. I will first start with a continued development of the southwest side of the airport during the 1960s and 70s. Additional hangars were built from field aviation west to 11th Street northeast. 
The Imperial Oil SO aircraft refueling agent was located in the field aviation hangar mid-right of this photo. There were two separate occasions during the 1960s that we had Lancasters fly into Calgary for their final landing. The first Lank to arrive was scheduled to be placed on a pedestal at the main entrance to the Calgary International Airport. In the mid-1960s, the Lank on the pedestal is located in the foreground of this photo, which is south looking north. The tower in terminal number two is on the mid-right. Tower number three was under construction in the mid-1960s and located on the top left. Terminal number three was under construction and located on the top mid-photo. In this photo, north looking south, the Lancaster on the pedestal is on the mid-left with the main entrance to the airport and terminal building number two on the mid-center. The other lane carried on to Florida, where it now makes its home base. This lane on the pedestal was removed 30 years later, where it is presently on display at this Air Museum hangar. This photo is the interior of the larger hangar for the larger aircraft on display. This is the main entrance to the two hangars. This is the original building and is the home to the smaller aircraft on display. This is the view of the interior of the Air Museum, which was originally the RCF military drill hall with an outside parade square. This photo is southeast looking northwest. The southeast side of the Calgary Airport lower center of this photo, grew rapidly during 1960s and 70s. The following photos will give a closer view of the southeast hangar line. To get a closer view of each hangar, we will now take a tour of the flight line from south to north. Now we will take a look at the hangars and the flight line on the opposite side of the taxiway. First there is Meridian Aviation. Then there was International Jet Air that was also the SO dealer for the southeast side. There was Inotech Aviation. Texaco transferred their aircraft refueling service from the southwest side to this hangar on the southeast side. The last hangar in this line was Executive Flight Center, which is located on the top right. We will use this photo north looking south. Executive Flight Center is the first hangar on the left. Executive Flight Center was a fixed base operator with Gulf Oil aircraft refueling. The abbreviation is FBO. It was a home to many corporate aircraft and helicopter companies. It was a service center for itinerant general corporate, and military aircraft, and was also known to host royalty. We will now refer back to the mid-1960s with runway extensions to runway 1028 and 1634 completed, and tower control was still in tower number two and still without radar. It was near impossible to see aircraft three kilometers away from 1028 and three and a half kilometers to runway 1634 and four kilometers away from the proposed terminal number three which was under construction and this was all without radar in the tower. It was decided that tower number three would be constructed midway west side of runway 1634 and would include radar in this tower. Tower number three was in service in the late 1960s. It was placed midway between the ends of all the runways. Radar was microwaved from the antenna to the tower. Take note of the microwave receiver antenna on the top of the tower roof. This view from the southwest looking northeast 
was a view of the airport from the interior of tower number three. There were four control positions. From left to right was the clearance delivery controller, the ground controller, the coordinator, and the tower air controller, and all had unrestricted view of the airport. The terminal control unit, the abbreviation is TCU, was located below the tower at ground level. The TCU interior was an arrival controller and a departure controller with a coordinator between them, and the supervisor mid-right. Tower number three, top mid photo, and terminal number three were both completed and in service in 1967. Terminal and tower number two, on the top left, now no longer required and is scheduled to be leveled to make way for the shell hangar. During the demolition of this terminal number two, someone had the foresight to remove and relocate just the tower cab. The cab was relocated from the southwest side to the southeast side of the airport on Morgan Air's hangar, which was located next to the newly completed Dome Petroleum's hangar. Over the years, with technology improving and a need for additional staff, a new tower facility was required. An increase in height of the new tower would enable the controllers a better view of the airport. This tower number four was constructed slightly west of tower number three. This is the view of tower number four's main entrance. This is the view of tower number four's location, mid top right. With the age of the original AASR-1 radar and the advancement in technology, this ASR-5 radar antenna was added, which is now located northeast of the terminal building number three. The tower on terminal building number three was never used as an air traffic control tower. Many decades prior to plans made for a parallel runway 1634, Land to the north and east of terminal building number three was wisely purchased for an advance. The location of the parallel runway 1634 would be difficult to see from tower number four, so this tower number five replaced tower four, and runway 1634 parallel is now in service. I have grouped all these photos of mine from tower number one through to the present tower number five into a montage. I then added them to the last aerial photo that I took of the Calgary airport in the late 1980s. The arrows direct you to the location on the airport of each tower. More information on this history is available for you to read in the description below the video.